first, tell us, Conchita, how did you find Carolina? How, how did the cooperation start? Well, I uh, started uh, last year before the US Open. I was uh, on holiday in San Diego, and uh, I got a text message from my friend, Rene Staffs, and she's like, hey, you know, only hey. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm like, I'm here in San Diego, seeing you. So uh, she's like, okay, you know, so she started talking about how, uh, was it Cincinnati when they started working? Yeah. Uh, so they started working in Cincinnati together. They were going to New Haven and they were going to start working together, but she was going to be really busy for the US Open and to see if I would be available to, to help. And so, you know, it, I had no doubt in my mind. I mean, it was uh, such an opportunity, you know, um, to first also work with my friend and then, you know, Carolina being such a great tennis player. And it was uh, only one week more of vacation, but uh, I spoke with my family and we all decided to, to go in, in New York and and work with her. Yeah. And does Garbini still like you after the day? Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, we worked together uh, in Doha, Dubai, India was Miami, and um, you know, then we stopped the relationship. So, you know, I'm free to do whatever <laughs> I want. No, I'm, I don't belong to anyone. I don't think. But yeah, I mean, we have a good relationship, and we always will. Have you already met Carolina Fisher? <sighs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, um, you know, to tell you the truth, um, you know, we play Spain played her uh, on the Fed Cup, and you know, we nearly even say, you know, we say hi, of course, but uh, I never had a conversation with her. And uh, when I met her in at the U.S. Open, so we we went for dinner. You know, uh, we I think it was Thursday. I had four days before the tournament started. And I was so surprised, uh, happily surprised on on how much she, she spoke. Yeah. You know, um, you know she she was, <clears throat> she was very open, and um, so you know I I love her from minute one. So and she's very honest. She's very honest, very open. And I told her, you know, um, if you want me to help you, because I mean we had you know this much time. You know, you need to be uh, really open to me and tell me, you know, uh, tell me everything. And she said, I'm, I'm sure Stafsi already told you everything. I'm like, no, no, you're not going to get off that easy. So, you know, we, we spoke a lot and we got to to know each other and had some great practices there too. And, you know, it went pretty well too. So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy. You won Wimbledon with Carpini. Uh, how special was today's game? So that you had two girls that you knew very well playing against each other? It was uh, another uh, tennis match. Uh, you know, you approach it as uh, being professional. You know, we uh, you we work on, on the match like it was any other match, any other player. Um, and, um, you know, it was, you know, of course, it's, it's sort of funny to, to see it on, you know, on the other end. But, you know, I'm, I've been working with uh, Carolina now for some months. So it was just another match and I, w I was as intense as I am with you know whoever I'm coaching you know I can't help her uh, help it so uh, it was so okay a little bit calmer in the box like not pumping your fist I was pretty pumped <laughs> 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 I was uh, I think uh, I you know I get I get really intense <laughs> during matches so no I was you know you gotta be professional and do the same things that you've been doing so Conchita, did you get after Garbini any offer from Spanish players? Uh, no, no, no. So you didn't get any offers. What did you What did you notice in Carolina's game? What did you improve? Well, we've been uh, we've been trying to work a lot on uh, in the off season. Um, a lot of her movement, uh, a lot of um, you know, uh, with uh, with some drills also. Um, to for her to be really aggressive and together with Stapsi, you know, she's been working a lot of uh, also on coming in. So we keep a uh, very uh, open communication on what uh, we wanna work, what did, do the other wants to work, and you know, we try to put it in a in a whole package and and, and try to. 
to do it uh, together and it so far is is working really well and you know she's you know moving uh, very good it's gonna be a, a long process because those things you don't change uh, in one month but uh, I think she's uh, she's doing it pretty good uh, she's going I mean I think uh, the other day she went I don't know how many times to the net the, the second game she went so many times to the net and also finished a lot of points there so she's becoming more aggressive and also we're working on, on her being very positive on the court which is uh, really a key to, to win more matches. It seems like she's maybe not being talked about so much. You know, other players are maybe being talked about more in terms of potentially winning the title, but you must be pretty excited about how she's playing. You're going to have to repeat that oh, because okay. you went no. way too quick. <laughs> I'm just saying that other players are maybe being talked about more than Carolina in terms of people who might win this title, but you must be excited about how well she's playing. Yeah, I'm very excited of, of the well, of how well she's playing, especially today I've, I've you know, I think it was uh, 23 winners, three and four zeros. I mean, that means she's uh, moving so well on the court that she's behind the ball all the time. You know, when you move that well, and you're pretty much sure you're going to hit the ball wh whatever you want it. And uh, being such an aggressive player like she is, um, that means a lot. And, you know, we we are very focused on ourselves. Uh, I don't really read the press that much. I, you know, she doesn't either. You know, keeping the focus is key in, uh, in a Grand Slam. Um, 14 days where you have to be every every day, um, you know, keeping that focus. So we're trying to do that and, and she's been great about it. Mm, you know, it's, it's great working uh, with her because she's very open for suggestions, so that's good. Now, Halep or Serena, great challenge. Uh, is Sky ready for the breakthrough to make it back? Yeah, no, I think I, I I told you before, yeah, she's, she's ready. Um, you know, um, we're going to take uh, the next match and all of the matches she's going to play with a lot of respect. Uh, you know, she, she's going to have to play uh, her game. She's going to have to play her best tennis from now on uh, because it gets harder and harder. And she's, she's, really, she's ready for the challenge. Uh, so let's bring it on, no? <laughs> when, in, oh, yeah. when you're going into a match, let's say, whether it's against Halep next or Serena, um, do you think if there is experience in the past of beating a player, such as if it were Serena and she beat her in that U.S. Open semifinal, for example, in 2016, is the uh, the confidence from that just as important as whatever strategic plan there might be and might have been gleaned from an earlier match? Or mm -hmm. how do you think those two weigh? Well, I think uh, having wins against uh, your opponents or always help. I mean, uh, in the back of your head, for sure, you think about it, and, and, and it gives you confidence. But um, so that's a plus. Uh, but then you have to prepare the match like uh, any other match. You know, you have to keep your routines, and um, they're both different players. Uh, one is more aggressive than the other. So we're, we're going to see who who wins, and then we'll prepare the match uh, tactically. You know, uh, the best we can, so we can. Uh, break through in the quarterfinals and, and win that. And But, you know, uh, for sure, keep the focus and keep working the same. Vegeta, do you agree with Martina Navratilova saying that there is no change of generation still in women's tennis? There is Serena and the others. Well, Serena is a very strong uh, player. We all, we all know that. I mean, uh, look at what she's been doing uh, after giving birth. Uh, it, you know, she took her time, but uh, pretty pretty soon she was back, uh, and now she's back to what it was. So uh, she is an amazing athlete, amazing champion. But uh, I think there are a bunch of uh, other tennis players that are coming uh, behind, and, and they are great tennis players as well. Um, you know, of course, it's hard to compare yourself to some someone that has won how many 22 or 23, 23 so uh, it's tough it's tough she's an amazing champion like i said but um, they are amazing tennis players also so i think we need to take care of them too because you know they're amazing at what they do
Katita, uh, without this extraordinary uh, confidence for Carolina, of course, you, you mentioned she had won it before and she, she knew she, she could do it very well. But also we see seen her in the past uh, very nervous in, in, with the big players, you know, even Halep or Serena. So is it your responsibility to get that confidence back or is it someone else in the team that has to work in that mm -hmm. mental thing that has been perhaps a, a, a place that Carolina needs to work more, much more? I mean, we, we all work on, like I said, uh, you know, staying very positive. Uh, the team is amazing. Uh, we are uh, always uh, trying to be in the best mood possible. I think uh, Carolina is a relaxed uh, player and she has a, a positive uh, team behind her. I'm sure she's going to feel all right. You sometimes cannot control the nerves. Uh, you can only learn from your experiences. Uh, sometimes you might be nervous in the second round. Sometimes uh, you might be nervous in the semifinal. Sometimes you might play a, an amazing final. Um, you know, you have to try, like I said, work, 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 uh, keep your routines and, f and maintain the focus and the rest is going to come. If you have hard work behind you, I'm sure uh, good things are coming. Kai is a Czech. Uh, did you learn something about the Czech Republic or the Czech language? <laughs> something special? Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to keep it to myself, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Especially the language. <laughs> Uh, and I'm hoping to, to get there. I haven't been to, to, to the Czech Republic with, with the team yet, but uh, I'm sure it's going to come. One more. Um, what's the most difficult? Playing, coaching or commentating on television? Oof, uh, it's a good combination for me. It keeps me, you know, busy. Um, my passion is in coaching right now. You know, uh, now I play 18 years professional. So after I retired, uh, that was that was it. I think I had a very long career, and uh, I'm quite happy of how how it went. Commentating is fun because it keeps you uh, in the game, and I've been doing that since 2006 with the same mm. channel, uh, Eurosport Spanish, and and we are like a, a family, and mm. there's one of the family, a member of the family, so. It, it's really nice to, to spend time and to, you know, to see and, and work uh, with the matches. I do men, I do women, so it keeps me really uh, up to date. But uh, if I had to pick one, I'm going to pick coaching because it's my, I'm really passionate about my, my work and I really enjoy it. So I, I'm really enjoying the, the, the job. Is there, is there a role model that you point to Carolina and say, this is exactly men or women? Is there, is there a player? This is how you should win your matches. Watch this guy. Well, this guy. I think it's, it's not a difficult one to think of. I'm, I think I, uh, Rafa Nadal could be the perfect role model. Uh, and we actually had a, a little, and, she, and it was actually coming from her. Uh, like, you know, like, it's amazing to see Rafa, you know, he's six laugh, six one, three laugh, and he's still playing the same, you know, the, the point as the first point. You know, he's still working, you know, the point. He's he's not making anything silly on the court. You know, he's going, keep going, keep going the same way. So, you know, and uh, so that's something that we need to look up to. His attitude is remarkable. Uh, I'm talking about stylistically. Uh, stylistically. Yeah. Um, uh, who? Feather, yeah, uh, Carolina has a great slice, but but we need to work on the one hand the back. Hand. <laughs> Although she did one today, I don't know if you yeah. seen it. Um, I'm gonna have to think about okay. that. Sorry. The, uh, the, the, there's a lot of talk about uh, coaching, whether it should be allowed at the Grand Slams the way now it's allowed at WTA, how it could be done. I'm wondering. You could look at it from both sides. When you were a player, would you have liked to have had coaching during matches? And as a coach now, would you like to be able to uh, help your player? Um, I think uh, one thing should be the same in different tournaments and the Grand Slams. So you need to unify that. If you ask me, it should be legal, but should be legal from where we are. Um, you know, sometimes going into the core and, and, and doing the whole deal, um, I'm not that like uh, pro, but I would like to, you know, be able to like 
sure. if I say something to my player from the box, I mean, being always uh, very respectful of, you know, that, that I could say something, you know, and try to help a little bit. The whole situation of going to the court, uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that big <laughs> uh, fan of it. You know, of course you have to do it. If not, maybe you're going home. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would like to do it from the stands. I when think that would be. Player, would you have ever, uh, say that again. If as a player. You, when you were a player. I think uh, the same way. I I never had coaching because uh, I was before. Uh, but um, no, I think uh, from the stand should be should be okay and enough. <laughs>